decisions that, were, that we had to make. Um, you know, we sat down with Max. We really went over the things that worked, the things that didn't work, kind of his wish list items, those types of things. Um, really, the first thing was the hardest decision was what six maps. And as you can see, Ascension here uh, made the cut, obviously. Um, so what I'd like to do is just kind of walk through the map a little bit. Um, so first of all, you guys will notice the updated visuals. Um, now, I'm going to talk to the visuals just for, a, just for a little bit as it relates to the design, and then we'll kind of get into some of the wish list items and some of the, the, the other stuff that kind of uh, was the results of the feedback um, that we got from talking with Max, as, as well as just all the research and everything that we do, listen to community and listen to the fans. Um, obviously, you know, with, with the Xbox One, uh, oh, sorry, thank you. Um, with, the, with the Xbox One, we're able to do an incredible amount of uh, visual fidelity, um, but there's a challenge there. Uh, we found very quickly early on in the project that we're sitting here, we're making the map super sexy, we're really pimping them out. But what happens is you start to get a lot of, a lot of visual noise. Um, and one of some of the, our basic uh, kind of really design goals are that any change cannot affect gameplay. So that even goes for visuals. Um, the things that visuals can do is they can really start to muddy really the gameplay. And well, how does that happen? Well, target acquisition. Um, just a lot of noise and level. Um, people not knowing paths or paths, those types of things. Uh, so, you know, that was, that was a, a big challenge we really tackled, we tackled head on. Um, so let me kind of point out some of the, kind of some of the key visuals here. Um, and a lot of it really deals with uh, just really, we wanted to just immerse you even more in, in the levels. Um, you can see here. <laughs> So what our artists did here, um, obviously we have a beautiful skybox with the halo ring rotating around it. Um, they basically created a, a halo ring that's to scale in game. Um, and that's what you're seeing right now. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. Um, I'll can try you, to can you drop down there and run yeah. around? Yeah. So <laughs> show us, prove it. Totally, totally do that. <laughs> um, what I can do is give you guys a, a much better view of it. Just to kind of give you a fantastic view Jump of just on the how much work to see how good you are. How much work went into this? So we're over here by the leap of faith. Oh, I'll jump. Okay, I'll jump. <laughs> <laughs> and you just don't really realize just how incredible the, the visuals are until you. Oh, so. <laughs> Huge, huge uh, just hats off to our artists. They've done a fantastic job. Um, so obviously there's a lot of other things you guys can see, and I'll move through this pretty quickly. Just incredibly detailed uh, terrain, uh, natural features. The uh, Forerunner structures are just gorgeous, um, just absolutely gorgeous. Um, so let's move on to the gameplay stuff a little bit. Um, you know, when, when we got together and we talked to Max, uh, you know, there were, there were a couple things at a high level that we wanted to do when, with the maps. Um, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of skill that's involved. There's a really nice skill gap in Halo 2. Uh, and people love to know the trick jumps, uh, to know these different paths to do this type of stuff. So what we really tried to make sure uh, was that we maintained those. That was really important. We maintained all the skill jumps from the, in, in the original maps. Um, in addition, we wanted to add more. Uh, so you know, all, your, all your classic skill jumps and those types of things will be in the map, um, including some additional skill jumps. Now, this is, this is a, pretty, a pretty standard one. And then just really small things, because the, the, really the most, the most important thing here is that every single change, no matter how small, has got to add to the gameplay. It has absolutely got to add to the gameplay. Um, every single thing that we did to the game had to be a home run. Anything that was 50-50, anything that was kind of like, meh, no, cut. Um, everything had to move the game forward. So just simple things like this. For those of you that are familiar with the, the sniper rifle platform here, so you know you could drop down here before, right? Well, what we wanted to do was, for skilled players, they can get up here from another route. So we've seen a lot of really, truly skilled players actually jump up that path, flank their opponent, and it's just fantastic. It's just really subtle things like that have really added a lot to the game. Um, I'm gonna go through here and show you guys a couple other really, really important paths that we have changed. Because we know everyone really wants to see the map. You kind of see all the changes that we've done. So I'm really excited to kind of show you guys that stuff. So here's a Banshee platform. Again, fantastic view of the Vista. So something that really kind of came out of the feedback with Max when we were talking about, um, about the map was the Skybridge does not really get used a lot for obvious reasons. Um, it's really kind of one big circular loop, travel loop. Um, there's not a lot of cover. So, and when you're out there in the middle of the Skybridge, your, uh, your options are really limited. You can't really bail out very easily. So what we thought we'd do is we, we thought we'd do a couple of really subtle things. 
So everyone always thought that the connection here was kind of awkward. So what this did is we added some additional space here, we did some modifications, and it just played fantastic. Um, people liked the additional space to fight. They liked being able to approach the Banshee platform in, in a different way. Um, and then most importantly, one thing that, one reason that people really didn't use the Skybridge a lot was they, they would get sniped from Big Tower, and that's fine. Um, and what's really important about all these changes is that we, we've got to maintain the original spirit of the map. The original gameplay of the map, the original spirit of the map. The map, Halo 2 in general, and this map in particular, is really about the zone control, about controlling the, the big tower, about controlling the, the, the small tower. So we don't want to take that away from players, but we want to give the, the, the other players a chance to counter, to counter uh, the people that hold these power positions. So you can see we've added some additional cover while running along here from the big tower. And then really one of the biggest changes um, is we added this entire center kind of platform structure here. And it's fantastic. People really get a chance to kind of fight in here. It gives them a lot more tactical advantages uh, or tactical strategies that they can do. Um, and then, of course, this was originally uh, an original skill jump. And, of course, I botched it. Um, that's how you can tell it's a live build when the, uh, the lead designer uh, is not paying attention and botches a uh, skill jump. And I'll probably <laughs> hear about that from QA on Monday. Um, so what we did is we, we made this skill jump uh, a little easier. Um, but what's, what's great is we, we noticed the more skillful players are now able to do this jump backwards. They're able to do all this type of stuff. So we haven't taken anything away and we've added stuff, especially for, uh, you know, your, your less skilled players or your more casual players. Um, and by having this additional structure here, it's just really played well. It's so subtle, uh, but it's just really worked out fantastic in terms of adding additional cover when you're trying to approach either way, either approaching the Banshee platform or, or uh, attacking the big tower. Uh, there's a lot of other changes that we did. Um, you know, for instance, there's, there, there weren't not a, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, long range weapons around this area. We added a, a Covenant carbine here. Um, it gives you a little bit to counter the BRs and, and the sniper, uh, the sniper rifle. Let me go up here to the big tower. So I think really one of the biggest things that we identified in this map uh, when, when talking with everyone, getting feedback, with talking with Max is just the dominance of long range combat in this level. Um, so there's, there's a number of things that we, we, we tried to do to, uh, to kind of to help along with this. Uh, we, we adjusted spawns, we added additional cover. Uh, I think one of the biggest changes though, and, and the, the thing that I'm most excited about is we've really tried to add a lot of dynamic elements into the maps. Um, and what's neat about this? Wait, are you? Have you shown this yet? No. Have this is this is the this first is time anyone's seen. Are you sure this? this is okay, Dennis? Wait, I didn't think you were going to show this, Dave. <laughs> All right. Okay. Do you, do you guys want to see this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't know we were showing this either. But there goes. Can't pull back. Yeah, now. Right. now we're showing it. Gone. We're showing it now. <laughs> so. You know, when talking with Max, one of the wish list things for Max, and Max can, can verify this, is he wished that they had done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he wished about. that they had done a lot of the more dynamic stuff, like in like in Zanzibar. You know, the bridges, the wheel, those types of things. Uh, those people find those things exciting. Um, so something that we we've done with with this map in particular is um, we have added an energy shield in the middle. <laughs> So, not only is it gorgeous, it blocks gunfire, it blocks projectiles, and what's really fantastic about this is, well, when you get into kind of cough in the middle of this map, it gets insane. I mean, it's like Thunderdome inside there. But what's really important about this is there, there are three, there are three um, control panels around the map. Um, and it, and when, when it comes up, players can basically activate this and they can provide cover in the middle for their teammates, um, whether they're running around it or whether they're inside of it. And what that really does is it gives players just another really interesting tactical advantage that they can do. Um, and it's, it's just been fantastic to watch people hit, this, hit the shield and then you know, assault the big tower, assault the small tower. Um, it's just been really, really exciting to see that type of stuff. And this is really, um, to go at a high level, this is the type of stuff that we, we're doing across all the maps, even though we haven't announced what, what the maps are yet. Yeah. But you can expect to see this type of stuff. You know, really going, taking Zanzibar and spreading that throughout, you know, kind of, kind of levels, um, as well as, you know, going just above and beyond things like plasma coils and those types of things, really trying to up the interactivity and stuff in the levels. Awesome. Thank you, David. Thank you. I think... I think I'd love to go right from there talking about how important it is um, maintaining you know, everything about the core Halo 2 experience. I'd love to get right into talking about the sandbox and, and how, uh, how, how you did that with the